report. A go. Talk, Jackie, talk. Talk, Jackie, talk. Here I am. <laughs> we did it, you guys. We did a stand up comedy show. The three of us Woo. and Wendy Liebman. Yeah. Yeah. And I forgot to post it on the Patreon. One person called me on it, and I uh, have thought about buying a, uh, one of those Catholic things where you beat yourself uh, with a whip, because uh, I felt bad about it. I felt. Bad. I like how you're pretending that Andy doesn't have one of those and uses it on you every <laughs> single night in your sex den of a quarantine. Yes, yes. When I think about a sex, a, a sexy, sexy, sex den of a quarantine. I don't know about you. I don't feel particularly sexual right now. I'm so sorry. Um, I mean, I'm not willing. I'm willing to go through the motions if someone were to initiate contact. But uh, I'm just telling you. <laughs> am I am I showing up on this video at all? It's yeah. it, oh, am I okay? For it's not on my. Uh... You have some sort of you're you're like you ever see that movie Ants or whatever the one where everybody's tiny. That uh, you, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what you look like. Should you I put, like turn my lights on? Yeah, there you go. How about a little bit of that? I uh, put. I did the the video since we're posting this on the Patreon. Uh, which, by the way, there are no tears. It's a buck a month. If you still have a job, fucking Patreon it up. We're paying Kyle. Also, oh, yes, Woo! exactly. We just cut him a huge check for the next three months. Um, yeah, that's good. Uh, we're going to do a stand-up show for Patreons only. Because on, of my fail. <laughs> I th I th on, on Friday night. This Friday, Friday night. night. Yeah, we'll, this Friday. we'll figure out exactly what the time is and stuff like that. But you, you, can guys do you can do 30 minutes and yell into the, the, into the internet for 30 minutes. Okay. By the way, that worked out really well with Andy doing, Andy and Kyle doing the door. Yeah. And um, let's explain how that worked. Okay. Uh, the way I set up the meeting was that you had to register and that there was a waiting room. And, um, and so once with you, Zoom. With, with Zoom. With, yeah, with Zoom. Yeah. And then people would go into the waiting room and if it was all just your phone number, um, you were let in last and kind of flagged. And Andy had like a piece of paper and a pen to write down if they were going to, if, if somebody was a dirtbag because I mean, what you really want to do is you want to let the comics in first, even though um, there was a problem because the co um, the way the participants list shows up on on the on the Zoom participants is in the order that they showed up for the meeting. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't let the meeting like there, there's a box you can tick that says uh, let people show up before the host. I wouldn't actually do that because. Okay. Uh, he had to keep searching for you and Wendy and Kyle because they got bumped down uh, right. on the participant list. Uh, so if the first three or four people in are the comics, they'll be always be at the top of the participant list. And then when it's time for them to do a stand-up set, you spotlight them instead of pinning them. Oh, great. And, and then, uh, which is a, a, a word that is in those three dots, the three more dots, you know? Yeah. You can, uh, yeah. I, oh, I, I, Go ahead. Oh, go, no, I thought what was cool is there was a, a chat on the side that everyone that was there was sort of participating in, or a lot of people were. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. want to riff, go to the chat. And everyone could be muted. And in the end, because we tried to do unmute everybody, but in the end, Andy and Kyle ended up unmuting like 15 or 20 people that they knew the names of, that they yeah. knew that they would sit and watch the show, and that they didn't have background bullshit going on. Right, which, I think, which was enough to to be a laugh for us, I think, and then enough for a, a laugh for the people who were just laughing along, kind right. of like a laugh track, but more live and real. Yeah, I mean, we just needed a couple good laughers, so it felt like stand up, and then mm -hmm. so we don't have that dead look in our eyes after you tell a joke <laughs> to silence. So, so that that was cool, and it, it, we kind of learned a little bit during Wendy's set, which uh, sucked, but um, but I think yeah, because her, her audio was now. bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and somebody unbelievably had like, was on like speakerphone with somebody else during the show. <laughs> like, what the fuck? So that, but you know what? It's this way everyone's muted. And then we just, we pick a few people that we know are uh, not going to be distracted and will participate. And it's, it felt like a show. I felt so happy afterwards and I had so much fun. That's and it. I had the the lowest expectations, but we did have real audience members there. It wasn't comics 
waiting for their turn. We had people that wanted a stand-up show, which is yeah. important. I think, I don't know, I'm a little at, still apprehensive of doing like an open, open mic or whatever, where it's just a bunch, me and 10 comics with notes, you know, right. it's, right. It's, pain, it's painful to perform and painful to sit and watch if you don't feel like it, but you sort of need to because that's the only audience. Right, right. It's, um, it's what, yeah. And this is, this is a temporary fix, you know? I mean, Carmen Morales has, has the methadone analogy. Yeah. But this is a methadone, you know, this is, this is the fix we need for now. And, and it's not like we're not writing. I mean, everyone who's, you know, we're writing the bullshit that's going on around us. Right. Jokes are going to happen whether you write topical or you don't write topical. You know, you're always going to, if you're a comic, you're always writing, in my opinion. To me, though, it's it's also, I, I write more when I had a show. So so normally, my entire comedy life, I've had a show that night or the next night. So I didn't, writing wasn't a thing I thought about. It just was like, oh, I got a show. Let me take out the notebook. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I haven't written that much stand-up. But when, when we had a show that night, I sat down and... It came up with a new idea oh, yeah. and stuff, so that was cool. The weird thing, sorry, that's me, is uh, I've been noticing, or you know, for for both you and I, this this is like a a, a habit that's like thirty three or thirty four years old of performing almost every single night, and it's it's really jarring for the first time to be out of that habit and not be able to jump back in at any time, you know. Right. And if we want to jump back in, because I literally, I, I, you know, since the show, I don't, I think I did, I did our show, which was last Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was today, Saturday. So I did one last night. That was just, it was a, it was, it wasn't Twitch. It wasn't Facebook. It wasn't Instagram. It wasn't YouTube live. It was something else. It was, it was called steam something, but it wasn't steam. It was Steam Park, or it wasn't the video was it game. Was Do you have a QB show and you don't even know it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. And, uh, but it was with Phil Johnson up uh, the Bay Area guy. You know him? <laughs> guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he had um, he had a couple other comics, a guy named Eric Escobar that I worked with at Roosters, and a woman named Nina G, who, I don't know, I think she's from the Bay Area, but uh, she, is a, she has a stutter. And um, her set was great. It was great. She had a she had an incre incredible dick joke about stuttering that wasn't about <laughs> stuttering, and uh, but or it wasn't about it wasn't about it was a dick joke, but it wasn't about sex. It was about stuttering. Okay. It was, it was both. It was a really good. It was a nice. It was a great bit. And, cool. But those um, are the only two sets I've done. So since then, which was today, hi, uh, I've been thinking. Well, maybe I could throw a show up right now. And I, people would come and if, cause I, there's part of me that thinks if I throw it up quick, it'll be, it'll be less likely to be trolled. Right. That's a good Bamford, idea. Bamford had a problem with trolling. Did you hear about that? Uh, yeah, I did. Um, that's awful. Uh, and it was, and it was the bad kind. It was the kind where I, I've been in a couple of, um, sort of meetings where uh they're just pornographic images and a lot of the n-word and a lot of bs so, so it's it, 14 it, year olds yeah it's somebody like like you see a person like you see me right now and they're just shouting the n-word or they're just or they're posting porn in their little video box right like if you don't turn off the share screen option anybody could just share their screen and it might it'll have porn on it or it'll have horrible racist stuff on it like, um, somebody told me that they were putting up like pictures of hangings. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Like they literally have thought it through as to how to be the biggest shit bag in the world, which, you know, you got to admire some heck. God. Jesus Christ. It's just not cool. Right. I mean, and, and when somebody's just trying to, you know, talk everybody off a ledge, you know, <laughs> you know, we're it, all trying to help. It is, it is awful, but it's also like reassuring that douchebags are always going to be douchebags and <laughs> that never goes away. Like no, the, the coronavirus can't kill an asshole. No, not, you know? not, not even so, specifically. Sadly. So in, in terms of humanity, it, it sort of, even though it sucks when it happens to you and it sucks when, you know, I don't want my kids seeing porn during, uh, 
a, cl a class. class, you know, yeah. they're deliberately targeting kids' classes and stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but hey, those people always exist and. Yeah. This is my new setup, by the way. This is, uh, I realized that if I, because I was using that, I, I have an, I, I had an icicle thing with a, with a mic and I'm still going to use that for standup because it's not being recorded, but I've been recording the Dork Forest. I'm using Zoom and I don't know that I'll use Zencaster, even though a very nice woman pitched enough money to me to buy a year of it. Uh, so I did buy a year of it. Uh, but then I have my, my Zoom Zoom, which is what we usually, you have one, Lori. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And, and Kyle has one. You can use it as an interface okay. for a mic and it, uh, you get better quality sound. Like for the next episode, you have a mic and an XLR cable and I, and you should have a cable for the Zoom to go into the computer. Yeah, you have I a do. regular mic. I do have that. Uh, so if you, if you put just a regular stand-up mic into your Zoom uh -huh. and then take that cable from for, that you would plug into the wall or into the computer and put it into your laptop, and then uh, on the scrolly thing, it'll say, use it as an interface. It'll pop up, and you'll say yes. And then um, it'll, it'll be better quality. I tuned out about five sentences. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle and I will talk you through it next time. I'm totally fine with the setup I have. I don't want to complicate it. I uh, I bought a Zoom because we, as the physical product, because we needed one. I don't, it has too many uh, ins and outs. And I'm like, oh, it's too much shit to plug in. And right. uh, I, whenever we need it, I hand it to you. Be right as a sacrifice and you take care <laughs> of it people like these uh the zoom videos yeah that I, we're doing well you YouTube. know what enjoy this face if that's what makes you happy <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> said they did this is not what they thought kyle would look like <laughs> i get that a lot do you <laughs> you're a giant man uh -huh. well um <laughs> here's the thing they could have googled kyle up before now i mean that's pretty lazy to go i wonder what he looks like for four straight years and go ah, i'll look it up another time <laughs> yeah that is completely on them you are correct <laughs> and uh yeah so you want to do a, a patreon show on friday right yeah Let's okay do that. yeah you can do the you can do the long set That'd okay i'll uh, i'll figure it out and and we'll send the emails out. Um, yeah, uh, my mom suggested that I use this time to write a book. Did she? Yeah. Yeah. Have you thought about telling her to use her retirement time to write a fucking book? I would like to beat her with the book, <laughs> but I don't feel like writing one. I don't have any ideas. It's like, so I, sad that they discontinued the white pages. Anyway, uh, <laughs> no, <go ahead. laughs> That's what my dead mother used to occasionally hit me with a with a with a phone book. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. She yeah, was disappointed. Yeah, yeah. You know, it has a nice heft to it, and uh, you really want to get the attention of a five year old. You're gonna want to just pick up anything that's at hand and just go bam. Um, five years old. Yeah. Well, she that, died when that, I was seven. Is that the is that the Armenian? Did she die hitting you? She's I mean, that Irish. Oh, that, okay. is that the act? That's an Irish goodbye. Bam. Anyway, <laughs> it is. That's a very, that's a, that's a very Irish of that generation of woman, right? Mm. Of of troubled troubled youth. Mm -hmm. She was very young, poor thing. Uh, I'm I'm sympathetic, but not supportive, as you can imagine. Right. Um, so, yeah. So you don't know what you want to write a book about? No. Uh. Nope. I was thinking about my romance novel again. Yeah. What about this? Elon Musk walks into a coffee shop. <laughs> that fucking uh, piece of shit. I stand by my original hatred of Everything you've ever him. said. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see he, what he did to Morgan Murphy yeah. today? He stole, yeah. He stole a, a joke that she, she wrote with pictures. That is a before and after, after of her dog. And he stole the... He, he, joke, cl he cut it he, so that her name wasn't on yeah, it. Yeah, he made it seem like that's those are his dogs and he thought of the, that joke. He He's a horrible person. And this idea that he's a, a genius is, he's not. Smart you people don't, don't do that. Smart people don't, well, no, criminals do be, that. You might people. be an evil supervillain. Because the thing is, is uh, he, you can be a, 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 terribly, a terribly, a terrible person and very smart. Right. Very but I mean, he something. even stole 
Nikolai Tes Tesla's name. That's not even like, <laughs> okay, come up with your own name, asshole. Which is such a slap in the face of Tesla because Edison had already stolen all of his work. Oh my God. Yeah. That right. isn't actually accurate. And if, feel free not to email me with the, with the real story. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know so much, why don't you appear on Dork Forest and tell Jackie all about it? Oh my God, people are, people are appearing. They're appearing. I did one with Darla. It's coming, oh. up, to, it's coming up tomorrow, Monday, but Tuesday. What, what was your topic? Uh, Darla has been prepared for the Great Depression uh, all of her life. So wow. it is depression cooking. Uh, it is uh, recipes to cook while you're in quarantine. So and she, she's <coughs> one of those people that this is her time to really shine during right. the quarantine, yeah, during yeah, a this... national pandemic. Right. right. She's got, she's got uh, potential. She always has. <laughs> <laughs> Does she have a, I remember once when I was, uh, I was on the road, I was like doing one of my things where I was driving to Chicago and back and mm -hmm. uh, wow. I stopped in Topeka and uh, Topeka, Kansas, because it was sort of, I think it was right on the way ish, you know, close <laughs> to 80. And uh, I, I, I met with Miss Alice Hart. Her name was Alice Hart. She was friends with my grandmother. She, my dad was raised in Topeka and she was still alive, obviously. And her husband was still alive. And he had been a POW in World War II. Wow. And um, it was a very nice visit until they took me into the basement and the basement was filled with cans of food. And then it was like, uh, oh, that's some, that's some POW shit, I think. Yeah. You know? yeah, that's, that's some, I'm afraid the big one's gonna, we're gonna survivalist kind of. Yeah, way. some long lasting, you know, uh, effects of that where you, where you don't see it when you're having a, a conversation with the person and then, then you, then there's evidence that it's still in their brains, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that, but I always was impressed by that level of prepare. He was ready for the Nazis <laughs> to come back and, uh, they were oh, right. or anyone. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I went weird. shopping today. Uh, I have, I got some masks on, uh, it's weird. Like all of a sudden a ton of mask makers appeared on Amazon and then they were two days later, they were all sold out again, but, uh, sure. Uh, I got some masks and, uh, you know, bought a bunch of food. I, I'm trying to buy, trying to like have three weeks constantly so that if I get sick, then. Nobody you know, has to go anywhere. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Lori Kilmartin. <laughs> you, uh, you're like, I too am planning for when the Nazis come back. And, uh, Heads up, by the way, they're back. Uh, I'm so sorry. Aki, they are here. Aki. Mm -hmm. what, um, uh, there was a six-hour comedy show last night called Laugh Aid. Did you hear about that? And I should have, because the Dork Forest is on All Things Comedy. Well, was that an All Things Comedy production? I, the John Cleese one? Or I, the other one? I don't know. It was Pat. It was, was one that Wendy it. Liebman posted about. Patton was on it and uh, Jessica Kearson and... Oh, no. This must okay. have been a different one. This one, I th think, was Jody... I think it was Jody Liebman who put it together. There was another one that All Things Comedy did with John Cleese. Okay. Well, either way, um, you and I are comedians. And mm -hmm. the, the one I saw or I read about was like six hours long. There was plenty of room for you and me. <laughs> I don't think either of us is contacted. No, Do people no. know the all things comedy the one? Well, the all things comedy one, I literally tweeted at them and then I deleted it because I was like, oh, fuck those guys, man. I mean, if they don't want to book me, they don't want to, I mean, they don't want to book me. It's not Bert Kreischer's fault that, you know, Bill Burr loves him like a brother. <laughs> it isn't, it isn't uh, Bill Burr's fault that Al Madrill loves him like a brother. They're all, it's a big boys club at, at all things comedy. And so, they have a couple of sort of the up the younger crew. Yeah. Women. Oh, it's always the younger crew. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Which, you know, they're okay comics. I mean, we're better comics if you were looking for stand-up comedy. But if you were <laughs> looking for uh, attractive young women who do stand-up comedy and do it pretty well, but not as well, uh, I see why they would have... <laughs> 
Because oh, digging a, a hole big, big enough? What am I doing? Hey, hey. What, a, what a dance that was, Jackie. And I it think a, you successfully navigated the Straits of uh, Magellan. I don't know. Some, <laughs> some place where, where ship captains frequently crash. I think you, I think you got through that okay. Uh, I know what you're saying. Interesting. I, <laughs> we Let don't me want, write that down. <laughs> You don't want to slam your fellow comics, uh, at least on video. Right. Uh, but uh, but it's it, it you can't help but notice a pattern of uh, it, people in the industry ignoring. I even I told my I told my manager I'm like, hey, you know, I have multi-camera angles of my sets at the punchline where I taped my CD that I haven't still haven't you know, sent off to anyone yet. But I mean, it, it could be cut into a special Netflix, you know, it had an audience, you guys, Netflix or anyone, if you want content with an audience, you're gonna have to get something that's a couple months old, but it's here. Yep. And mm -hmm. I was told probably absolutely not. No. Without even, without even. <laughs> without, without, without them even going to Netflix at all or anybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Uh, you know, Comedy Dynamics might do it for if you paid them. <laughs> you know, Jackie, <laughs> I thank you. That is a great opportunity. Um, well, you know, you know what they call it? They call it exposure. That's what you're getting paid in. <laughs> maybe after I release my album, uh, maybe a couple of months later, I could just put it up on YouTube with people. Oh, like I did with Horcrux? Yeah. I Yeah, I don't know why. I, I, I think I put it... I because I put my Horcrux DVD on, on YouTube with a private link because I genuinely, there was part of me that thought that this was going to be over in a couple of weeks and I was going to take it down. Right. Um, but I think this is going to be several months, obviously. And we're, you know, we haven't even peaked in all these things. And But the... Um, the Jackie, I yep. would mentally say 18 months minimum. Well... Prep, the, prep for that. Well, the weird thing about uh, like both of those, those uh, benefits last night Mm -hmm. You had to make under a certain amount of money. And uh, thank you, Maria Bamford. I've made over that amount of money. <laughs> I am not eligible. And, uh, and, I, and I, I bless the fact. And, and I am, and the, the other thing is, is I don't, I, I have, I have a little bit of a buffer. I don't want to take it from comics who need it. Right. 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 And um, so plus, People who have been listening to The Dork Forest, I got two really big donations this week from people who've been listening to The Dork Forest for Aww. over 10 years. Wow. And they're like, hey, I've never donated. Uh, here's a pile of money uh, because uh, now's a good time, don't you think? And I'm like, yes, yes, now's a perfect time. Thank you very That's much. That's great. Yeah. I, I, um, I did not try to get any comic or artist money. I know SAG is giving people money too. Yeah. Um, I did apply for that small business loan because I'm incorporated. Um, and the uh, one at First Entertainment? No, the one, uh, no, the, the part of the uh, congressional from part of the first stimulus or relief package is, yeah. it's, I think it's called, it might be called PPP, I forget. Um, but I, uh, I will try to get some kind of loan just in case. Um, you, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, right. currently, everything's currently, we're still currently working and doing shows. And, but I mean, 18 months of this, I, I don't know what, what, what that will, looks like, what Nobody that looks knows like. What that looks and like. I'd rather have a loan that I have that a very low interest loan that I pay back later. If I, if I don't need it, then, you know, it was a, okay. But, uh, but I, I don't, First I don't. First Entertainment need, Credit Union has a, has a $5,000 loan that they're, um, I think it's at zero percent. Wow. Yeah, for if you have an account there. And Andy's had an account there forever. But uh, I'm hoping, uh, I don't know what I'm hoping. I, here's what I, here's- well, Jack, Jackie, are you incorporated? Yeah. Okay, so you here's the thing, from what I understand about this loan is the first $10,000 are potentially forgiven, which means you don't have to pay back. if most of the payroll, most of the money is used for the employees on your payroll, who, who are you? <laughs> right. So it's something to look into. Um, to, you know, you can go to the bank you bank at and just uh, apply through that. Oh, really? You know? Yeah. Okay. Because it's, back, it's backed federally, so any bank can give you oh, the, I see. that loan. But I mean, if you have a relationship 
however anyone does with a bank. Yeah, my, my, co my corporate account is at a real bank yeah. a, or it's one of those weird boutique banks. It's uh, it's called First Republic. Oh, and, um, do they have a green sort of uh, logo? Yes, okay, yes they I've do. Seen them, so they're... Possibly an eagle. I can't remember because <laughs> um, we know how good eagles are with money. Yeah. Um, but who knows? Uh, well, it, it's it, if it's no interest or zero, or very low interest. This this would be the time to apply for it, just because yeah. you might you know in in a year it might from take now. A, yeah. Well, yeah, it might take a while, but a year from now, maybe you aren't as good of a risk as you are now, and then it would be hard for you to get a loan. And this way, at least you would have a pile of money that if you had to pay it back, you you might be able to, and you could be forgiven for the first ten thousand dollars. Interesting. In, all you have to do is look into it. Ask, talk to your bank. Okay. That's my I'll advice. Write down. For anyone who's incorporated, you know, you are your payroll. So it's a loan to yourself and the first 10,000 might be sort of free, I guess. Yeah. Which, um, I don't know, been paying taxes for the last 30 years. I, I don't know how free, I, it seems like a good use of my tax money. And uh, yes, finally. Yeah, what the yeah. heck? Finally, exactly. It's not that I don't <laughs> love drones. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am spending. I'm buying uh, and getting meals from restaurants like at least three three nights a week, which I, I I've never been like that. I'm just trying to spend money locally, you know, right people, on people businesses near me. Uh, okay, while I can. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what are you doing the nights you're not like? You're not a big cooker. What are you doing? Frozen no. <laughs> uh, uh, pizzas? What's happening? Uh, yeah, sure. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, leftovers from the night before. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. So three nights. So, yeah, because if you do, we did, we went to the Chinese restaurant last Sunday. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I talked to you about this, where someone stood too close to me. Wait, you had the thing where the guy was standing next at the Japanese restaurant. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm where you told him he was going to kill somebody. Yeah. And he's a piece of shit. Yeah. I'm still empowered from that moment. Jackie. So <laughs> tell me about yours. Uh, I didn't say anything. I just backed up into a wall. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't, it, it wasn't my finest moment, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but we ordered, um, we, I, like I went to the Chinese restaurant cause I assumed that jackasses weren't ordering at the Chinese restaurant, but it turns out they told me that I could get a duck and a bunch of this other food. And I get up there and I'm like, okay, so the, we got food. We're still eating off of it a week later. We just, you, the vegetables. You bought a duck? You ate a duck? I, Chinese duck is the greatest food on the planet. Chinese duck. I've never had it. Uh, oh, good. One day, one day when we're allowed to go out to a restaurant, <laughs> we'll have, you'll, you'll look at it and go, I don't know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you'll watch me eat it and enjoy it anyway um but they were out of and kyle will come and uh but the uh but i do think that um they were sold out of duck by the time i got to the front i said no i ordered it over the phone and she said yeah three people came in before you even bought all the duck oh they didn't set any aside after you paid for it or you hadn't paid yet no i hadn't paid for it because oh. uh, they only take ca sweaty, sweaty cash, which is uh, another way I'm uh, over tipping. Because guess what I don't want? The change. <laughs> uh, and uh, so. Do you want to do a break? Oh, yeah. Let's do a okay. break, you guys. And we're back. Mm -hmm. What um, Are we close enough to do Comic of the Week? Yeah, let's do that. How much time have we done? That's a great question. Thank I you. I think we're at like 29, aren't we? Yeah, something like that. Almost, almost uh, halfway. Oh, okay. All right. So our comic of the week is Steph Tolov. T-O-L-E-V. Steph like curry, S-T-E-P-H, Tolov, uh, T-O-L-E-V. And um, she, is she Canadian? Is that what you said? This is another, this, Jackie, you know, my theory is what happens with the female comics from Canada, they basically, they're like athletes that are training in high, high altitudes, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> They do these fucking one nighters in front of fur trappers and gold miners uh, all over Saskatchewan or whatever, and they become monster comics like beasts on stage. And then they enter the United States, and we're like, "Where the fuck did you come from?" <laughs> and, and Steph Tolov was born. She's one of those man. She's really funny. She's really really strong. And, she's a uh, she's a monster on stage. I watched yes, two, three of yes, her videos. Yes. Yeah. And her stage presence is 
it is it is that one nighter energy. It's that no, you bastards, allow me to wrestle you to the ground and tell you a joke right in your face. Yeah, and I, then I, I'll let you up to laugh. My favorite. It's my favorite energy. It's my favorite. Don't even fucking try heckling me. I will destroy you. And the audience senses it immediately and they cower in fear. That's, I love that. And, and I love other kinds of comedy too, but I just love somebody who you're like, you could throw a bowling ball at this person and they would catch it and still keep doing their act. That's because you're nostalgic for your nineties. (laughs) <laughs> I that's because that's what you were it was it was because that's that one-nighter energy i remember yeah. that one-nighter. i remember in that i'd come off of like i would do these six-week runs yeah and i would come off a six-week run and i would be the biggest ball buster like <laughs> cursing i was just like what you fuck you and uh <laughs> it was like literally i was a genuine guido from uh an old-timey movie sure and, and then, um, and then- yeah, I would do those too, like those triple runs for like, you know, three or four weeks three at weeks, a time. Yeah. And then you come home and you're working at, you're doing a coffee shop in San Francisco and the crowd's like, oh my God, right. Jesus it's, Christ, it's, lady, tone it stop, down. Right, don't, stop hitting guy. There's no reason <laughs> for the hitting. And then, But it would be kind of nice to do a six week run like that to come and then, because I couldn't ever write. I didn't, the, the stuff I wrote when I was on those runs was always not keepers they were okay <laughs> yes it, it, they were always okay premises right and if right. i could turn them into something real i needed enough time at home or in an a club yeah where i could noodle around with them yes yeah yeah the crowds aren't great listeners um, so they they <laughs> miss a lot of standing on things. like yeah when you're standing on a disco floor and all the <laughs> and all the and the light, the light, the only lights are the disco lights. Like and the, and there's not even a spotlight. The, right. And, and for, and for some reason, all the speakers face you instead of the audience. <laughs> Have you ever been to one of those? It's brutal. Yes. <laughs> uh, there was some place, it was in Wyoming. It was off a major highway in my, Wyoming. Cause I remember pulling off and going, oh my God, it's right here. <laughs> like it was, it was almost at a truck stop. And uh, it was like five people in the audience, and um, it was that exact scenario of they hadn't, they clearly had never put a comedy show together before. Like Triple had, <laughs> Triple had talked him into it, you know, over the phone, and and uh, it was horrendous. But I, yeah. I'll never forget it. Yeah, <laughs> some of them were genuinely horrendous. I. Uh... I remember that crazy Minot gig. It you you you, you ever walk into one of those rooms? It's like you know, it's a it's clearly just like a full yeah, wall. Is that it? North Dakota Minot. Where? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so it was, it was open floor. The bar was in the middle of the room, splitting the audience in half. Ugh. Always a terrible idea. Awful. But it was packed because it was Minot. I believe in either November or February. Right, right. So there right. was nothing else to do. And it was, so it was packed to the gills, probably 230, 260 people. And I remember thinking, this is going to be so great. <laughs> and then I got up and it was literally a wrestling match with uh, like, come on. It was, it wow. was like, you're, it's like you're a conductor yeah. and you're trying to be like, all right, less trombone. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I'm going to yeah. need to hear from the violas. Yes. And uh, so... Um, I did a show in Spearfish, South Dakota, which oh, is yeah. like some big Harley Davidson sort of. Yeah, yeah, that's and, where that and thing probably is. worse things. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> probably, uh, probably other disturbing things. But um, I don't remember the show, but I remember the pool. Uh, it was <laughs> I, I had the lowest of expectations. I, I went to some. It was like a new aquatic center, but uh, it, every time I was promised a pool in one of these smaller towns, it was always total. It was just disaster. And I remember walking in, it was like 25 meters and it was pr- pr- pristine. The water was, it was like swimming through liquid crystal. And I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I, I, it, that and the, the other I was shocked was in Elko, Nevada. Do you ever work Elko? No, Ron Rontowski did it for like six months. Do you remember that gig she did there? Wait, she had a gig there for six months? In a row. No. She lived there. 
what? With, with like dancers and stuff where she had to host and do stand up. You got to talk to her about it. It's oh my trip. God. I want to do that gig one day. I do. Oh. I, th- I feel like she, uh, maybe I already reached the mountain as a comic and now I'm sliding down, but that's oh, yeah. okay. I still yeah. want to hit the gigs as I slide down to my death. No, no, those, <laughs> those are good gigs on the way down. Yeah, for sure. Um, but was yeah. there a pool there? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, uh, and there was so little else there that I couldn't believe <laughs> they, had a, they had a great city pool. I was shocked. Um, right. The Elk, Elk is where they do like cow, the cowboy poetry, poetry competition or, or whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, it's one of those little mid-sized Nevada towns that has a little gambling uh, here and there. Yeah, a little bit of everything everywhere. going on. Yeah. I have this to say, uh, we should have a recurring segment called Lori Kilmartin, remembering pools. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking blows, man. I'm so sorry. Have you, have you thought about trying to swim, like create any sort of a tiny meter thing in your weird kidney-shaped pool? It's it's not a kidney. It's a it's a rectangle. But uh, it, it, it is a rectangle. Yeah. It's fucking freezing, and um, yeah, it's too cold right now. But yeah, as we go, I I don't know. I mean, maybe I can think of something. I I, I got a um, a water polo net for my kid so that he can practice, you know, throwing. Oh. But you got to get in the pool, and it's too cold. I don't know. It's just well, it's like fifty five degrees right now. I mean, Probably today yeah. is crazy cool. Yeah. To be in an outdoor pool, unless yeah. you're desperado. Um, yeah, uh, I didn't even go for my walk today. So, so are you today like, for the first time? Yeah, are you mostly walking then? Yeah, yeah, I'm. But you know, uh, we got the we got the the thing that said wear masks now. Right. And they're to stop sort of par- partic- any sort of particulates coming in because people are they don't have the symptoms, but they might be carriers of the of the virus. Mm-hmm. So it will protect it from getting into your mouth and mouth, uh, nose and eyes and um, just orifices. Right. And it's mostly our hands touching our face and it right. reminds you not to touch your face. That's well. that's more what it's for because, and it, and it, it will stop. If you have COVID, it will stop some of that from leaving, you know, it will, it will stop some of it, but it won't, it's not as good as an N95 mask. Um, and but if you have an N95, an unopened N95 mask, bring it to a hospital. Of course. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. it's, it's definitely a B solution, but mm-hmm. that's all, that's all we have. But, uh, um, yeah. I bought I Andy mean, 30 pairs of me undies one year. <laughs> I don't know what the they had like a thousand different uh, colors and styles and, and I posted that thing on my Instagram yeah. because one morning he was like I could turn this into a mask and then he took his hound's tooth pair and did it so he's got like a dozens of pairs that he's never worn because he's been you know they're very well made small ad for me undies you guys yeah uh, I don't know what the code would be probably Burr Bill Burr <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> But the, uh, cause I, I know that they advertised on him, but, uh, the, but the, um, but so he's there, and I wore, the, I went to the post office the other day to mail off a bunch of orders because I've got shirts coming out of my ears. And, um, so, I, so every show I do, I'm like, Hey, here's a shirt. Why don't you guys buy this weird, my dad quote shirt or this squish shirt. And so I, I've been selling shirts, which is good. That's and cool. Then, yeah. And, um. Though the challenge coin hasn't been going. There's one on the floor. Anyway, but uh, the um, but I wore I wore a pair of his MeUndies, the ones that had the candy corns on them, and because uh, you can turn it into kind of a burka, it's kind of nice. I want to get one. Uh, I want to get a balaclava, like and just look oh, yeah. like I'm in the IRA. Schema. That's yeah, what a I little want. little ski mask. Mm-hmm. Sure. I never knew the word balaclava. I think I read about it in an old timey romance novel. <laughs> um, I'm maybe pronouncing it wrong. No, maybe that's it. Balaclava. Okay. That's no, baklava, sure that's, a, that, that's a <laughs> baklava. <laughs> it's a honeyed, honeyed uh, okay, dessert. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, that's. <laughs> What, 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 what's a po- comedy podcast if we don't have any shows to talk about? That's what I... I like the idea of the two-hour um, just impromptu. I don't know. Is there 20 people who want to come see me work on half of my two one-hour set? Because Sure. I'm sure there I mean, is. 
I think I think the show that I did with you guys, I did work on the dad stuff. Yeah. Did I do the dad stuff? Yes. Uh, because that stuff is really hard to do for me sometimes too, because it doesn't have enough punchlines. It's more story based. Mm-hmm. But the only way to get more punchlines is to do it. Mm-hmm. And so it's sort of draining. Like the next day, my throat was killing me, and I'm like, "Oh, I've got it. I've got, I've got the thing." And Andy was oh. like, "Or you yelled into the internet for a half an hour, mm-hmm. and that's why your throat hurts." And he was correct. It's fine. Uh, yeah, it, it was weird because I, I I have comedy voice, which is the voice I use when I'm on stage. And then in the middle of a bit, like it, there were it seemed like there were audio problems, and then I just was like, "Hey, are we okay, audio wise?" <laughs> that then, was kind of funny. I got cleared up, and I went back to so anyway, guys. I went back to comedy <laughs> voice in the same room on the same mic. Yes, it did make me laugh. <laughs> I'm yeah, not- <laughs> some, so why don't we do a break? Why don't we do another break? Yeah, let's do that. I think we're at, um, what do I think we're at? I think we're at like 42, 41. Yeah, something like that. It's so, like 41. Wow, that break made all the difference. I'm full of stories to tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been uh, doing walks. Uh, I, I've been doing rowing for like 15. Rowing is fucking hard. Yeah. Ugh. So I try to do like five songs, you know, row to five songs, which is maybe 15 minutes total. And, there you go. Uh, uh, and then I do uh, some yoga. I, I've been doing um, hot, yo- hot yoga Pasadena has live Zoom, sh- not shows, uh, Zoom classes. And oh, wow. so they have one from at 7.30, 8.30 every morning or most mornings. And then um, uh, the, uh, the place I go to, uh, also have put some stuff up that's free on YouTube, but it's not live. The thing is when it's, when there's not a teacher that can see you on the screen, like I, like I will pause and, then, and it's like, I'll you know, do an hour of tweeting and then, oh, but it, it just, it's, it's really hard for me to stay focused if I don't have anyone you yeah. know, that I'm being held accountable by. Um, how do you make it hot? Oh, you don't. Oh, that's the best thing. It's cold. I love it. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to go back because a lot of these poses, because I'm sweating so much, I can barely, I'm weak and my foot's slipping out of my hand. I'm, I'm slippery, you know? And for the first time I'm able to do triangle pose, which is like this really hard one because I'm not sliding uh, onto the floor. Like you, I, I, with, I, with, sudden, with the sweat of it all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my feet start to slide apart and then I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm about to be impaled by floor. So, <laughs> but uh, now because I'm, I'm dry, I'm, I'm, I'm able to do the poses. It's uh, pretty... I don't have much to be excited about, Jackie. So I say, own what you got. It's, uh, <laughs> you got. You gotta, you gotta make it, make it happen. I, uh, I ordered um, a tiny. Th- there's this little. It was eleven dollars. Talk about price gouging. They rate. It's a. It's a. It's a handheld drone. You might have seen an ad for it somewhere where you sort of throw it up in the air and it just sort of flies around. It's uh-huh. for kids. It's for little kids. And I ordered one for. Um, my friend Robin is married to comedian Adam Grotman, and uh, they have a child. And it's not that Adam Grotman isn't my friend; he is a very nice man. <laughs> but Robin is my has been a close friend of mine, and so I got their son turned six in this. I mean, who do we feel? So I got him one of those drones. It's going to be delivered today. Whatever, I'm- but it's a super fun, cute little drone. The weird thing is, you know who I feel real sorry for right now. Uh, the 19 year olds who this is the hottest they'll ever be and they're all <laughs> they're trapped in quarantine and uh you know or you just got your first boyfriend and you're like i cannot mac with my first boyfriend because we are in quarantine you have a second hotness at 35 <laughs> because then you it. lose the baby fat and you're like a full woman or man or whatever you are but yeah. you you have a second le- uh you have a second try at hotness yeah, don't the worry hotness will remain. Don't sweat it. It'll if you're fun. 35, then I'm sorry, you <laughs> lost your opportunity. <laughs> you're going to come out of this 50 and <laughs> absolutely ignored by the industry and construction workers alike. <laughs> uh, I thought you'd get a bigger laugh from Kyle from that one. Anyway. It just felt so real. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, I made some hand sanitizer. Uh, I don't you know what. Uh, you don't need much. You just need uh, aloe, uh, aloe vera gel, which you can get on Amazon, and um, 90 proof um, rubbing alcohol, which you can also get on Amazon. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, Jackie, you're making the motion like you would, are you in danger of drinking 90 proof alcohol? <laughs> I'm always in danger of drinking 90 proof alcohol. <laughs> uh, and if no one else remembers that, I should. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, maybe Andy can make it then. But, uh. <laughs> exactly. Well, and we have, we happen to have a, a lot of, um, Andy, when we were um, cleaning out the garage, because the guy's fixing the garage out back, um, just one guy with a with a buddy they're six feet away working on you know they're they're fixing my garden and they're working on the garage putting up shelving yeah. and stuff and um when andy was moving all the stuff in the garage into the middle of the garage he found a giant bottle of sanitizer that we had when tiberius was with us uh because mm. tiberius died like two years ago and did tiberius was, use hand sanitizer no but after you've held an iguana Okay. You're going to want to put some hand sanitizer on you because sure. he walks around in his own poo. Right, or, right, right. Yeah, and he's gross. Uh, you, you know, he was, a dig he was a dignified fellow. I'm not saying he wasn't <laughs> a, a, a brave old man. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, so we have, we have plenty of hand sanitizer. We also, uh, I kind of panicked. Did I tell you about this? I, uh, I went through a little bit of panic uh, buying, speaking of survivalism, mm -hmm. ordered 10 pounds of lentils. <laughs> and uh, five God. pounds of barley, and uh, we got lentils, you guys. We got lentils, we got barley, and so I made lentil soup, and um, it's a good lentil soup, but I don't know if Andy's going to want to eat 10 pounds of lentils over the next 18 months. Can you, um, can you freeze lentil soup? Oh, of course, but okay. um, but to, to what? To make more lentil soup? <laughs> because we got a lot of lentils, ah. and um, so... You can also make like a lentil salad too, you know, um, if, if you like a, a sort of a, with a vinegar, a rice hey, wine vinegar. you don't have to sell me on lentils, Jackie. I'm on board. <laughs> if you have a red onion and some lentils and uh, some rice wine vinegar, you could make a nice lentil salad. Mm. Okay. Uh, if you want to eat it. It gets a little, the thing about lentil salad, it gets boring a lot faster than lentil soup does. I don't know if you've ever had lentil soup. I haven't. In fact, I haven't even heard the word lentil uh, more than I've in my entire <laughs> life than I've heard it in the last minute and a half. Uh, I knew you hadn't had lentil soup. Why? Why haven't you? Where's the? Um, I I I we'll make opened, mashed potatoes tonight. I opened a can of tuna today and I mixed oh. it with mayonnaise and that was uh, that was That's a good. lot of thank you. Can, can well have you thought about squirting in one tiny squirt of mustard? With your mayonnaise and mustard, it just it adds a little tang to it. I That's like all. it. I like it two-step process, and you just right. added a third step. It's true. It's true. I'm not here to get, to create work for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Andy also makes. Um, he tried to get chicken thighs the other day, and they didn't have them. But he went to Spartan Final. You would have thought they would have had a giant package just I don't know why he went to Smart and Final, but he did. Yeah. And um that's your went, last that's a last choice, Smart and Final. Well he's trying to avoid some he's trying to avoid the humanity. Yeah. And I'm like, you're never gonna find cauliflower at Smart and Final, my love. Right. And uh but the uh but he makes uh this chicken tarragon popover, which is puff pastry with chicken thighs in it and a bunch of some herbs. And uh oh I ordered an herb kit from Amazon uh, so I could plant some herbs and everything came except for the seeds. <laughs> what? <laughs> they forgot? They forgot them and I and I've I've done as much sh I haven't done as much public shaming as I wanted to do but I wrote them a, a note and uh, I we destroyed the box so I can't send it back to to Amazon but um, I would you like them to just a, you can what? use another box. Yeah, maybe I'll just do that. Maybe I'll just use another box because I think it was like 50 bucks. But yeah. it was it was it was pots and trays and soil and seeds supposedly for I think 16 different herbs. 
That's cool. I mean, you know, hardware stores are open and they have they have that stuff. Like the DIY center in mm -hmm. Burbank is open that, that has but, herbs. Well, my um well the they they finished they haven't finished the garden part of my backyard yet, the guys. Yeah. And so uh once they finish the garden part, I'm gonna go to my nursery and buy all the plants and stuff. Um, but the way they've done the backyard, uh, my garden is now much more intimidating uh, because it looks like <laughs> you're like, oh, uh, this is fucking farmland is what uh, I have back here. I have to, I have enough plant, I could plant everything. And they, what they did is they consolidated two very long uh, raised beds. Mm -hmm. And so even the two areas that I was also planting things in are not even included, but it's more planting area. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm fucked. I've, I've, I never wanted to be a farmer. You are going back to your Armenian roots. This we were probably... shepherds. We were shepherds and bankers, according to my father. My, grand, my, my, my mother's father was a shepherd. Wow. And my father's father was a banker. So, um, or the how, other way around. How did they meet? Those, those seems, they seem like two communities that wouldn't have a lot to do with each other. Well, the Turks uh, introduced them. <laughs> in a march, in the they had a parade. It turned it turned <laughs> out they met at the parade. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> I'm so sorry. They actually met in Illinois, I believe. <laughs> so, after the after the oh march. Oh my God. Yeah, but the the Turks were instrumental, sure. and weirdly enough, they grew up within. I think those two the two towns that they were from mm -hmm. were literally like eight or 10 miles from each other. Neither one had ever been to the other town because they were wow. little villages in Turkey sure. in the early 1900s. So, and I'm sure when they met, you're like, you're from Chomaklu? I'm from Tomarza. You're from Tomarza? You know, it'd be like, you're from Visalia? I'm from Exeter, <laughs> which is uh, two towns in California. Wow. Um, Thank you for that dramatic reenactment of your <laughs> grandparents' meeting. I well, felt like we, I was there in schlobby schlobby or whatever the, the hell it we, is. We had the time. So I thought, <laughs> might as well. So how about you? How did your grandparents meet? <laughs> um, my dad's dad was uh, kind of going from job to job. His, his father was the fighter chief of Albany. Any, oh, right, right. He's like big in the fire, and there's a lot of firefighters, you know, kind of classic Irish firefighter uh, culture there. Uh, but my grandfather was uh, not, and um, <laughs> he was hitting on my grandma, and she said, You better get a good job first, which I really appreciate that pragmatism. <laughs> and, uh, wow. Well, so we all started, look back on that and go, she was not wrong. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, they made it through the, de the depression. Okay, they um, they they had a store in Albany called Kill Martins, um, and they uh, family lore, and I can't remember it accurately. Is it is um, they went they went all in on short skirts, and then the next season long skirts were in, and they and the depression hit. Like this is 1929, and they went bankrupt, right? Yeah, they lost everything, mm -hmm. and then they uh, they kind of he managed a few stores. Uh, he managed a store in West Virginia for a little while, and then he got this job at this place called Berkson's in Topeka, and he was there for thirty years, and that's where my dad was raised. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know your dad was from Topeka. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Where'd your mom grow up? Uh, Chicago. In Chicago. Chicago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How did they meet? How did, how did my, my maternal grandparents meet? No, no. How did your parents meet? Oh, my dad saw my mom on a, on a train uh, platform and started following her every morning to work. <laughs> and he followed her in a drugstore and she was, she was like, she was sort of yeah. annoyed by him and he just said can i he was stalking her yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he said can i take you out and uh and i think she said yes to to uh make him go away mm -hmm. uh this it, it's it's if you didn't know my dad this is a horrible story and then on their first date he said my mission is to marry you on their first date 
Wow. And uh, she had, she was already dating another guy, this guy named Joe, who ended up dying uh, from, uh, he was an alcoholic and a gambler. His, his life took a terrible turn. And uh, she was going to break up with my dad, but she was, while she was like trying to write a letter to him, she was listening to a record that he had sent her and there was flowers in her bedroom that he had sent her. And so she decided to break up with Joe instead. Wow. Yeah. And then he died from alcoholism. So she's got a, she's got a lot to answer for. (laughs) (laughs) She could have stayed with Joe and he would have lived a full and happy life. Uh, We don't know. We don't know. Yeah, my mom makes people happy. That's the one thing I can say. <laughs> she was pretty. She was very pretty in her day. She had she has these giant green eyes, and she had jet black hair, and uh, that's always a striking look. Kind of a, a, um, a bit of an Elizabeth Taylor look, but the eyes were green, right. and purple. Right, right. Um, yeah, I got a text from my brother today telling me that everyone. He sent it to the whole, all of us going, everyone has to call dad. Dad's very bored. Uh, just talk <laughs> for five minutes. That's all he needs. Just someone to check in with him, or tell him a story, some fucking thing. <laughs> and uh, it was not, it wasn't that abrupt. That wasn't the text, but that's what the text, that was the subtext I read. And I was like, I was thinking about sending him the, the Albert Brooks movie, Mother. But I may have already done that. <laughs> so it's your- one of my favorite movies. Is your dad, so is he starting to stay in the house more? Yeah, he's, he's, he's in quarantine now, so. That's good. Which is good. My mom's he, life hasn't changed one no. bit. No, a- Andy been, today said that he's psyched, that he's kind of, he's like, I might, I might be liking this a little too much. And I said, do not go full Clyde Ashcraft on me <laughs> uh, because his dad <laughs> spent the last 20 years, 25 years of his life, moved to rural Arkansas where he could raise bird dogs that he would train from horseback and take them on field trial, essentially invented some weird job uh, and then lived next to a national forest and was stoned. And the first time I met Clyde, the first words, I think I've said it before, is Clyde said, you want a breakfast beer, Jackie? And I was like, not today, Clyde, not today. Hopefully not tomorrow, but not today for sure. How about Except that? for the getting stoned, my dad would have loved to end it up like Clyde. My, he yes. said his dream was to be on a porch and go back to Kansas, be on a porch and shoot cans from his porch. Well, you know, it's funny because Clyde had a bunch of guns. And when he passed away, it's almost uh, eight years now, I think, um, he, uh, uh, Cl- Clyde's widow is his, uh, is, uh, was not Andy's mom, obviously, but uh, Cindy was like, do you want any of these guns, Andy? <laughs> and Andy was like, no, no, I don't. What, what, what am I going to do with them? She's like, well, this shotgun is actually a, like a really kind of really nice expensive shotgun. And Andy's like, yeah, but I don't, because his dad would, re- he trained these bird, these bird dogs. So he had to train them with guns. So they won gun shy. Oh. And yeah. And, and he would rarely, not often, uh go he liked pheasant hunting and he liked you know he would go bird hunting and stuff mm-hmm. but but not a lot he mostly just liked dogs <laughs> <laughs> hey, <with> my dad <laughs> he liked dogs and he liked horses and he liked sitting around and to, and playing chess and um and and having unlikely friends he had like these <laughs> weird like he lived on this he the you know Cindy still lives there on this weird gravel road where every every day around two or three o'clock in the afternoon, everybody come down, get stoned, have a couple of beers, and wow. talk about UFOs and and whatever they were. Weirdly enough, the first time I was there, I met this guy. He looked like a caricature of a dude from Arkansas, right? Yeah. He was probably anywhere between forty to seventy. He had like <laughs> That's very quite a range. <laughs> giant beard, fuzzy beard, army jacket, missing several teeth. And uh, the first thing that guy said to me was, you read that new Umberto Echo book? (laughs) (laughs) No, no, I have not. I don't know if you've read any Umberto Echo, but it's very hard. It's super dense. They're historical fictions. The only one I read was The Name of the Rose. They made it into a movie with Sean Connery, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's the only one I read. And it was really, really well written and beautiful. But he was one of Clyde's favorite authors. And... uh, you're describing the market for my stand-up, Jackie. Oh. <laughs> Well-read, toothless people. 
I, I'm still reading that fucking book I can't stand. I swear I, I do two pages a night and then I'm out. It's so, uh, it's not, it's not boring. It just irritates me, but for, for some reason it helps me fall asleep, but I can't finish it. And I have these other books I, I bought that I'm dying to get to. I say, why did I No, I need to know how it ends. <laughs> well, Even though I, I hate to... all these people and I don't care about them. Yeah, go to the end then. Just skip to the end. I did a thing today where I, um, I did, uh, it was supposedly fun and it was kind of fun. It was a table read of, of a sitcom. Uh huh. And, um, and so it was just a bunch of friends got together to have a, we're going to read a script from a sitcom. And I'm like, okay, uh, I'll tell you about it next week. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, ha. Yes. 